You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. What could bring friends and family together better on the holidays than sharing a slap across the face? I don't think there's anything, Brandon. Well, today we're going to be discussing the slap bet in the slaps giving arc episodes of How I Met Your Mother, uh, one of our favorite sitcoms, in honor of my favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. So with that, this is Systematic Geekology. We are the priest to the geeks. I couldn't possibly be happier or more thankful to be here on the show with all you listeners and with one of the OG hosts, um, former host, your favorite guest, the one and only Brandon Knight joins me. Welcome, Brandon. Not the fir- not the first time we've done a Thanksgiving special together oh, on no. one of our other favorite shows. Yeah, I think we did Bob's Burgers last year. We did. Or, it wasn't you last year. It was the year before. It was, it was two years ago. Yeah, it was during the wow. that OG period. Yeah, man. Because we've Bob's been doing Burgers this a lot also than I remember. <laughs> Bob's Burgers also has a lot of really good Thanksgiving. Kill the turkey as well. Killed the whole world's thinking. Thank you for thinking you. But again, <laughs> oh man, I love Bob's Burgers and I love how you met your mother. I can't wait to do this. Um, I didn't say who I am. I'm Joshua Noel. If y'all haven't figured it out, I'm Joshua. Josh with the wrong opinions. I have many names. Um, and real quick, what I've been geeking out on, man, I've been geeking out on a lot. Um, ah, you know what? One that's gonna make Brandon happy. I've been on a Godzilla mm. kick the last couple of days, um, watching some oh, old good. movies, reading some Godzilla comic books. Here There Be Dragons is one I've been following. And recently they started up the Justice League versus Kong versus Godzilla or however it's phrased. I know those three are fighting each <laughs> other. And that's really all that I needed to know. That's the title. Things are fighting each other. Superman and Godzilla is involved. OK, yeah. And Big Monkey. Yeah. Um <laughs> So I'm going to go with that. I've been geeking out on uh, some Godzilla content, getting ready for Godzilla minus one. I think I'm actually going to drive down to TJ to see it. So I'm excited for that. Nice. I got to see if any of the theaters around me is showing it. I'm sure they are. Also, you can't forget uh, Apple TV Plus just dropped the first couple episodes of Monarch, which is a uh, spinoff to the current oh, yeah, uh, yeah, legendary film series, uh, film series. So I haven't Thank started it yet. If it simply would have been on anything other than Peacock or Apple Plus, I would have seen it by now. Just those two oh, for some like reason the one are just you like, don't have one of it's the just two. Like you the don't too have. far. It's like I just can't can't do that. I think it's because I like interesting. It, it's almost like uh, like RPG, and I've had all of my streaming slots filled, so I got to drop something else. So I'm going to add one. I just I like my main streaming services too much. <laughs> I, I totally feel that T-Mobile, we're on T-Mobile <laughs> and they consistently give yeah. us free Apple TV Plus. Ooh. Well, that's like, I fun. don't know if we've actually have paid for Apple TV Plus. Nice. Nice. So is that what you've been geeking out on then, Monarch? Or? Well, actually, actually, I haven't started it yet. I've been trying to finish up some Ooh. shows because not only uh, is there always new things to watch, but also we're getting into the holidays. So there's a thousand Christmas movies to start watching now. But the the show that I just finished, I just finished it. I think it was last Friday uh, was Modoc on Hulu. Have you seen Modoc? No. OK. Yes. So it's the the Marvel character, you know. Modoc, Modoc, Modoc. How are you saying? Oh yeah, Mo- okay, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know. We yeah, had so that. yeah, so it's one of the last non MCU Marvel shows. So this does not connect at all whatsoever. It is animated by Seth Green's production company, Stupid Monkey. I think is what it's called. Oh. So it kind of has that Fun. robot, robot chicken claymation style yeah. animation killer voice cast it's uh Patton oswald as modok and then in the context of the show he is married and has two kids one of his kids is voiced by ben schwartz oh. who you know is uh sonic the hedgehog in the oh. live action sonic movies yeah, he's weird. um oh he, He's got a reoccurring character on Parks and Rec. I can't think of his characters. Sean Ralphio. He's Sean Ralphio on Parks and Rec. Um, oh, and then his other kid. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. His other kid is voiced by Melissa Fumero, who was Amy Santiago in Brooklyn Nine Nine. So it's a really, it's very funny. That it's sounds great. Not only the animation style, but it also is very adult humor as well. 
Um, the my only complaint is so Hulu greenlit three shows a few years ago that were non MCU shows. And I was that was great. So far, they've been pretty good. Hit Monkey is another one with, worth going out of your way to find. But after they were greenlit, Marvel Studios immediately canceled everything because Disney Plus announced the MCU shows. So particularly oh. with Modoc, it ends on a cliffhanger. And there's at this point in time, I don't think there's any chance of a second season. So yeah, there is that. That is a bit annoying, but the rest of the show is really funny. Check it I out. I still wish they would have made a season three of Runaways. That was a good show, too. Um, I've never gotten around to that one. Season one's much better than season two. But anyway, okay. I'm not going to chase this anymore. I'm going to go straight into today's episode. Where we're going to talk about How I Met Your Mother, the slap arc. That's what I'm calling it. There are eight major slaps. I think there are other slaps involved. There's an entire storyline involved around one character just slapping the, man, I need a beep button, out of another character. And it's just so satisfying every time. Because the thing with, so who it is, is Marshall, who I think is the most lovable character in this CTV series. Yes. And for those who don't know, I met your mother is just it's a sitcom. It's, you know, like friends, any other like you know, group of people and they just kind of are doing life. It's not really I feel like the premise really isn't anything astounding. It's how one character ends up meeting their kids, mothers that he's narrating to. So he's narrating the story. Um, but yeah, the most lovable character, the good friend that everybody just is like, oh, what a nice big cuddly bear kind of whatever um, wins a bet against the. A character that I don't think this stereotype is allowed to exist in TV anymore, who is just this um, F boy, if you will. You know, he's just you would assume he used to be a frat guy. He's all about the ladies screwing people over and works for a bank. He is the man. And you find out that that's not necessarily all true, but, you know, you get the general premise. So one winning slap over the other is getting slapped the crap out of him throughout the show. A total of eight times. It's just great. Like you spend seasons just anticipating, waiting for the next slap to come. And it's beautiful. So that's what we're going to talk about. Sorry, I went on a tangent, but we're going to we're going to get we're going to get more into it and explain that a little bit better. First, actually, since this is Thanksgiving, when this comes out, I did want to say thank you to all of our hosts. Um, I want to offer thanks for our eleven and a half thousand followers right now um, for the podcast. Like I. It's incredible. That's mental. Yeah. When we started this, I think we had like 20 people following us, maybe, maybe. And that was with uh, 10 hosts. So everybody pulled in two. <laughs> you know? Woo-hoo. Yeah. We started this thing so low and really wasn't necessarily high expectations. I obviously you always want what you create to do well, but I wouldn't have thought two and a half, three years ago that I, I would have been doing two different comic cons for this podcast or any of the other number of events or different stuff that we were able to do. So I'm just so thankful for our followers, our supporters, our fellow hosts and our former hosts who helped us get there like Brandon. Um, I'm also very thankful for How I Met Your Mother. If y'all didn't know, I my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. I get really into it and I'm absolutely the guy who says, wait, we have to go around the table and everyone has to say what they're thankful for. So that's just something I do. Brandon. What are you thankful yeah. for this season? What am I thankful for this season? Well, I am coming off of the loss of my grandfather just a week ago at the recording of this. And uh, actually, yeah, this time last week, I was finishing up writing the service. Um, so I am thankful just for the family that I still have. I still have a lot of family members and it's growing. That's the other thing I'm thankful for. My One of my brothers is engaged. There's the expectation of another one being engaged here soon as well. So I am, I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for uh, just the fact that God continues to allow it to our family to grow and to see each other. Uh, I'm thankful for the fact that, uh, well, I don't have whatever crazy number you just said of people listening to my seminary life. But I'm still thankful for the group of people who tune in week after week. And I'm thankful for you, Josh, and the other wonderful priests, the geeks here at SG who continue to let me come back for some reason. I don't know why. It is very flattering. It's but the uh, 
It is the beard. It's really I'm all I bring Brandon's to the table. Beard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I hope I didn't come off like I was like, oh, we have this many followers or like showing off. I, like, I still oh, feel no, like no, this no. is a smaller I mean, show. That is why worth just, celebrating. Yeah, but I'm just, I am, yeah, I'm glad That's, that we're able to yeah. be where we are. Um, you know, and then, you know, I believe we're going to continue to grow and that kind of stuff too. Um, as far as like what, what stuff I'm thankful for outside of, you know, the show stuff, um, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's hard family stuff around the holidays can be difficult. Um, you know, last year I yeah. lost my grandmother on one side and grandfather on the other side. And it kind of, the holidays weren't as hard la- like as, as I thought they would be last year because everybody was in like, okay, we got to support each other mode. Like we all knew that it was going to hurt. I was like, you were prepared for it a little bit better this year. Mm, it seems like sure. it's not that the support's not there. It's just that it seems less conscious. And for me, that kind of when it does come up, it just kind of hurts more because I realize we're not going to be with the whole family this year. We're not going to be mm. doing all that we always do. And and part of that is because of, you know, sure. I got a new job and stuff that I'm thankful for. It's just also realizing, hmm, yeah, this can be a hard time. And I know it's a hard time for other people, too. So I'm thankful for the joy we're able to find in some of the dark moments, you know, that even though this mm. weekend's going to be tough, I also have David Tennant as the doctor coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's something silly and little. That but. is that is also <laughs> worth being thankful for. Yeah, so just <laughs> grabbing onto the things that are good, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be cheesy. I'm thankful for Thanksgiving, a season that reminds us to focus on these things <laughs> we're thankful for, rather than the things we're missing mm-hmm. and hurt by. And yeah, sometimes that's especially hard. And um, I'm sorry for anyone if this is like a touchy subject or anything like that. Um, yeah, but mm-hmm. I think it's worth acknowledging that yeah, this can be a hard time as well. With that, it can be. It can be. And one thing that would but make hard times, yeah, I was say, one thing that makes hard times better is just slapping the crap out of your friends. So, <laughs> right. oh man. So, could you? I, we've talked before about our love of the show. Um, mm-hmm. Let's actually let's start there. Where what is your connection to How I Met Your Mother? Other than just this is a fun show, is it particularly sure. meaning for you to you, or is it just uh this is just you know friends How I Met Your Mother? They're all just we like sitcoms. I mean, there is a bit of that of we just like sitcoms. My wife and I, we prefer to watch and rewatch sitcoms. We've been putting off restarting New Girl for as long as we can. I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to hold out, though. (laughs) Um, How I Met Your Mother. That is a good one. How I Met Your Mother. um, I would say of all the sitcoms, Seinfeld is probably still my favorite because it was on literally every day of my life. Period. Hard stop. Uh, How I Met Your Mother, I started watching it when I was in college. Mm. And then it was one of the first shows that Claire and I watched when we got married Mm. uh, together. I mean, we had both seen it already. Um, So, yeah, I would say How I Met Your Mother stands out above Friends and any of the other sitcoms, though, because of how it is written. A lot of sitcoms are very just... And then here's the next episode, and here's what we're doing in this episode. That's really what Seinfeld is. It's a show about nothing. So it's just, here's what we're doing today (laughs) in this episode. Whereas How I Met Your Mother is very Mm -hmm. narrative-driven, particularly in the form of its callback jokes, like we're discussing in this episode. (laughs) Um, It is also interesting to see the show age and over the course. Like you said, you start here with Barney at the beginning of the show, who is totally... A uh, a character we can't have anymore. Uh, Schmidt in <laughs> yeah. New Girl kind of starts this way, and they immediately change it. Um, and he uh, Barney stays pretty consistent throughout the show, but you do see characters grow. You see how the show kind of changes yeah. focus at different points. Um, but it's just very it's very well written for a sitcom. Sitcoms yeah. are normally and it's one where these two people are going to start dating, and that's it. <laughs> yeah it's weird because it's one where the very first episode i called how it was going to end and nine seasons later i i was right i like being right just that to throw it out there you know but <laughs> but it was still how it still wasn't predictable even despite that right like they they took through all these turns the plot mm-hmm. was deep the the level of interaction wasn't just here's a new situation haha some humor added in like there was um for all the big moments of my life, I go back to mm-hmm. how I met your mother and I know that's cheesy and whatever. And yes, I go to the Bible. I'm not saying this is my Bible, um, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I saw, found it in college. <laughs> I watched it all the way through with my brother. And then the night before my wedding, 
I couldn't sleep. And you know what I did? I watched every single wedding episode of How I Met Your Mother. And I actually changed my vows because of, spoiler alert, Barney's vows that he wrote for his wedding. I actually went, you know, Barney actually has a point. And yeah, it actually made me change things the night of my, like the night before my wedding. Um, When my grandfather passed last year, I watched the entire season that where Marshall's dad died. And it's just like you're able to make these connections and somehow... It kind of pulls you through the anxiety of a wedding, the the deep hurt that you experience from loss, because it doesn't just sit there. It, it adds hope. It adds humor. And it's like you're able to relate and connect and then kind of be lifted out. And it's just it's a beautiful show mm-hmm. in that way. I also every single year watch the slap series like I watch Good. yeah, all of these. I like these and then the Bob's Burgers Thanksgiving episodes. They're like that's my tradition. I have to watch all of these for Thanksgiving. It's a necessity. Nice. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So with that, let's uh let's talk about let's talk about the slap set, the slap bet. Um, Brandon, break down. How did the slap bet? How did all of this get started with Marshall and Barney? Well, what's interesting, if I remember correctly, is that the slap bet starts not connected to Thanksgiving, but connected to one of the other greatest reoccurring jokes. Robin in Sparkles. How I Met Your Mother. Robin Sparkles. <laughs> so. Robin, who's one of the friends in this group, for those of you who are unaware, um, it is discovered that there is a VHS tape of her that she doesn't want anybody to see. And Marshall and Barney make a bet over what the contents of said video is. Barney, of course, thinks it's porn. (laughs) I'm just I mean, I'm just going to have to say it like Barney thinks it's an adult. Robin Sparkles. Um, I get it. Robin I get where Sparkles. I came up with sure. And she's very protective of this video. She doesn't want anybody to see it. So they're obviously trying to lead you this direction of it's an adult film. <laughs> and they make a slap bet that whoever is correct gets to slap the other person. Yeah. Not that kind. Also, I love Marshall's and part of it where he's literally just his bet is literally anything other than that. If it's anything else at all. <laughs> He wins. Now, there's an important point to this reveal of what is on the video because they put it in and it starts off like a very stereotypical oh, yeah. adult. Like you're film. actually a little afraid what they might show. Like you're, show. you He'll think it's it. going to be that. <laughs> and Barney turns and immediately slaps Marshall God, to claim so his reward. But then <laughs> Robin says, what if I sing you a song? And the big reveal is that Robin Sparkles, <laughs> Robin used to be a Canadian oh, man, pop so star, funny. which with three hits, which are three <laughs> other really great episodes. Yeah, each episode, one great. of them being a song about going to the mall. Let's go. Which every to time you go the to the mall today, today. <laughs> so because of this. Um, Not only was Marshall right and the fact that Barney slapped him early, the slap bet commissioner, which was one of the other friends, Lily, determined that Marshall, Marshall's wife, by the way, determined that Marshall would get five slaps for whatever he could use at his discretion. And that is how we start this narrative of the slap bet leading up to slaps giving. It's so funny because Marshall does slap him here once. And, and I think actually, yeah, Barney was given the option. And this is actually going to be but some of the more interesting mm. theological stuff. And yes, I'm going to pull theological stuff out of this. Uh, was Barney was given the option that like he could have been slapped 10 times right then or five times. But it could be at any point in time, whenever. And Barney makes the, I will say, completely idiotic decision. <laughs> Like, yeah, five is less. I'll go with that. Not knowing what dojos and training Marshall would find to become the world's greatest slapper. That's one of my favorite episodes. That is so is funny. The training episode. That is much gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The second slap was because Barney. Um, un- That's two. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man, it was so funny. The second one, Barney was, for some reason, they all went to see something Lily did. And he was like, wow, that 
was awful. That stunk. And they were all upset because he's breaking the social norms. You're not allowed to tell your friend their play or whatever sucks. And he's like, oh, yeah. But if I did right. one, I could get you all just tell me that it sucks. I'm like, no, we're all too polite for that. We wouldn't do that to you. So naturally, <laughs> Barney puts on the world's absolute worst play ever. Moist. <laughs> moist. Yeah. Moist. Well, we moist. That was like a whole scene in the over play. And over. <laughs> Oh, man, it was so funny. And then they all gave up and said he was right. And he was genuinely sad because he planned out several hours more of awful content. <laughs> so they all proceeded to sit there and watch him continue to do it out of kindness because he really wanted to do it. And eventually, of course, Marshall uses his neck slap, <laughs> just gets up on stage and just slaps the crap out of. Oh, man. Then we come to Slapsgiving, my favorite holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And I, the episodes, several episodes ahead of time, they start building this up where Marshall is, he's go, they keep talking about their Thanksgiving party and Marshall just keeps going Slapsgiving. He's like, I can't wait for our Thanksgiving get to get Slapsgiving. <laughs> and Barney's like, wait, what? Yes. On Thanksgiving at exactly six o'clock, you will be slapped across the face. <laughs> right. Doesn't he even send him the yeah, link sends, to a countdown he sends a website. at one point? <laughs> It's like an in credit Marvel scene where Barney's opening up a Basically. email link and it's just a website that says this timer until Barney gets slapped. <laughs> oh, God, it was fantastic. He he did the hand turkeys that we see in the video here. <laughs> then he posts mm-hmm. everywhere. He's like, yeah, slaps giving. I oh, mean, so, Brandon, you want to tell everyone what happens yeah. at slaps giving? There was a wonderful gift of kindness that people passed around this holiday. Wonderful. Get- I'm trying to remember because it's been, been a while since I've watched these. Is this the one where Robin shows up with a date yeah. and Ted thinks that he looks like a very <laughs> old man when he really wasn't? Yeah. And Barney decides to just like storm out and leave. He's like, I'm not just going to sit <laughs> sit here and wait to be slapped. Wasn't that? Yeah. That's this yeah. one, right? OK. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, that's right. There's two slaps givings. There's there's two there's two slaps. So yeah, this one Barney yes. leaves and eventually Lily says, "Nope, there's no slaps on Thanksgiving. You know, you're dishonoring the holiday, whatever." And then Barney still ends up doing something terrible enough that he ends up getting slapped anyway. And she says, "You can slap him." <laughs> and he does <laughs> immediately. That's that's the slap. Good slap. Um, slaps giving two two is is a fun one for me because Marshall. In, in the spirit of kindness and forgiveness, wants to give someone a gift. So he starts with asking permission and getting permission to give one of his slaps away as a gift. Someone else gets to slap Barney. Oh, right. To <laughs> Ted or Robin, right? Yeah, well, originally, I think it was going to be to Lily's dad because her and her dad had this huge outing. And then her dad tried to give it to her mm. and she couldn't do it. And then Marshall was like, I'll give it to either... Ted or Robin, and they kind of had a debate on which one of them most deserved to slap Barney. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. because uh, everyone has a reason to slap Barney. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a pig. He basically tricked Lily into a situation where she was going to have to show Barney her her breast at one point. Um, that was a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, because yep. he he just he learned how to do the Japanese like hibachi grill stuff. Hibachi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like he spent like to win years a- just to make a bet that he couldn't do it and then get up and do it. <laughs> Long yeah. play. Yeah. Um, see, I'm trying to think of all the terrible things he did to everybody. He he stuck Marshall with an awful job. He's seriously. Why are they friends with this guy? <laughs> he, he dated <laughs> Ted's ex. Ted's ex was Robin. So obviously Robin has reasons not to like him. <laughs> right. like, they all had plenty of reason at this point. It's kind of there was the one time there was the one time Barney claimed Ted's identity and partied around (laughs) town (laughs) as Ted because he wanted to prove that architect was such a good pickup line. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. So I don't even I don't think anybody actually took it. I think Marshall slapped him again, didn't he? I think Marshall ends up taking it. Yes. And that's when we finally get the song. Or it might have been on the first slide. One of them is when we get the. Yes. Uh, Could you please give our best rendition of You've Just Been Slapped? (laughs) Man, I I don't know if I could do that. 
because he just it's describes just so the feeling of what it feels like to be slapped in the face. Across yeah, like, the face, you know, your cheeks friend. turning red. Yeah, you just been slapped. Yeah, it really what? just happened. Just been <laughs> yeah. God, I, I think that's uh, also see. It's funny because this was just like a little inside group thing, and then eventually it escalates. <laughs> the last slap, I think the last slap happens. Is it the day of or the day before Barney's wedding? Barney ends up marrying Robin, everybody. Big shock. But Be sure, there's more shock. shocks past that. It's, it's, yeah, I think so. It's like right there. It's in that last season or it's oh. in that wedding season. Well, I'm pretty sure. So once more, Marshall builds up the slap and he tells a story of how he prepared for the last slap. Um, Brandon, could you break down this story for everybody of what all Marshall did or what all you remember? Because I don't remember all of it. So basically, <laughs> it it follows this narrative. We've all heard this narrative before. Basically, Marshall goes on a spiritual journey to some mystical land, probably Tibet or something like that. I can't remember exactly. To learn the ultimate slap, like this, as like this ancient martial <laughs> art move. Um, and in the what's great about this little story that he tells is that he runs into versions of all of the characters oh, and Barney just keeps saying, no, you're making this all up. You're making this all up. And because <laughs> they're like, no, I didn't go. I didn't go. And Barney's just not <laughs> believing any of this up until oh, the point man. where. They're sitting in McLaren's bar where they always go for drinks and the rec the jukebox won't play any music. So Marshall goes over, you know, the old trick of, you know, you kind of bump the jukebox yeah. and then it starts playing. He goes to smack it and it <laughs> breaks in half from the power of his oh, slap. <laughs> so funny too and then the bartender walks over it's one of my favorite lines the bartender walks over and marshall goes i have much gold he holds up this little bag and he goes i have much gold to fi to fix it and the bartender takes it shakes it and goes that is much gold it's one of my favorite um, lines i say it randomly it's, it's just it's so wonderful because it really starts off and for those who don't know barney throughout the whole show tells these stories and they're never true it's like Barnicus back when he met Spartacus and <laughs> the first bros of ancient Roman. You know, like Barney does this kind yeah. of stuff the whole show. So it's the same kind of style where Marshall's telling the story. So you think that Marshall's just doing what Barney always does. And he's like, he went to one master to learn speed and one last to learn, learn control because his slap was simply too powerful. <laughs> and so I forget one it's of them ridiculous. did give him a little, you know, thing of gold. <laughs> So it goes through this whole yes. story and you're just assuming it's one of those stories like Barney stories. Nope. <laughs> Which really raises a lot of questions. Did Marshall travel out of country to learn the best lap? Is that canon? Is that canon? Does this really <laughs> happen? The iron fist of yeah, the just, of how I met your mother now with the, the slap. Oh, man. It's just it truly is like. Did he did he go here? Did he go to the giant hand mountain? Really Is that real? I really hope so. Wasn't oh, there a point man. where he gets more slaps for some yeah, reason? Yeah, because he ends I can't up remember why. adding three, but I don't remember why. Because there does end up being eight. Sure, wish I, I knew why one. now. He's awarded three for some reason. But these are like the main. Yeah. The main points yeah. in the story. Yeah. There are lots of episodes. They're all entertaining and they're all just around a simple slap bet. But I, it, it does. The question that it well, first, let's uh, what a beautiful slap. That last one literally just sends him flying. Mm -hmm. His face mm -hmm. is shining red. And Marshall gets boys <laughs> to men to come and sing the slap song in the show. And not only is it just a in the show thing, you can actually go to Spotify and download. Boys to Men's version <laughs> of You Just Been Slapped. And I, had that as a, I had that as a, um, a ringtone for a little while every time my brother called. <laughs> you Just Been Slapped. That's a good one. I was like, wow, I just can't believe how I met your mother convinced that Boys to Men, they need to sing about Marshall slapping Barney that hard. Well, it's not the first celebrity cameo <laughs> that they got that was... Yeah. Brilliant. Regis was so, a great that one. that show. Regis is a good one. Obviously, they're the originators of the whole Karate Kid. Uh, the bully is actually oh, the yeah. hero of the Karate yeah, that's Kid why movie. We get that Ralph Macchio, bad guy. Like 
like <laughs> Co- Cobra Kai is basically based off of a joke from how Cobra I Kai is just based on Barney insisting really, really hard. No, he is the good guy. <laughs> and somehow Ted manages to convince him to show up for Barney's bachelor party. Also, Barney's dad may be Bob Barker. We are unsure. <laughs> Oh, man, I love this show. I love the series. I love the slaps. They're so funny. But also, it, it did actually make me wonder, Brandon. Yeah. Is it worse to know when it's going to happen or not? Like, if we went to the first slaps giving, is it actually mm-hmm. scarier if you open up an email from Marshall that says <laughs> you're going to be slapped at exactly this time? Here's a countdown. Or is it worse to not know it's coming? Um, I don't know. I think knowing. It's better. I think for me, knowing is better because <laughs> at least then I like can anticipate it, which goes back to when the bet was first made. And yeah, Barney is given this choice. Like, yeah, you take the 10 right in a row, because even though you're going to be like wincing, you're not going to even feel it by the time you get to number eight or nine. <laughs> like, And it's over. Yeah. It's done. We never have to do this again. Um, whereas to know that at any point somebody out there could just slap you travel to because Tibet. you're being a little bit of you can travel to Tibet all learn the purpose just to slap that. you because you're just a little bit of an arse like <laughs> <laughs> oh man I don't I actually I actually don't know I think I'd rather not know yeah, rather I, not I think, know now not in the first sense the first instance where you're just given 10 immediately or five whenever no, 10 immediately. Sure. That is the correct answer because it's over, one and done. Don't ever have to think about it again. But once it's five mm-hmm. whenever, I don't know. I like. I feel like having it, oh man, it's just so hard because having it loom over you is scary. But something about like mm. the timer just being there, like I feel like I would over anticipate, like it would probably make the slap itself worse, but I feel like the fear leading up to it would be so overblown in my head that that might be worse torture than the slap itself. I mean, that's the point, too. I feel like, <laughs> you know, yeah, like if it were me, Marshall had me. Like, that's uh, man. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah. So if God were to give you a choice. Oh, boy. Right now, Judgment Day, or we have no idea when Judgment Day is going to come. Where are you going, Brian? Well, that's interesting um, because we know which one was chosen. <laughs> um, <laughs> man. Yeah. I'm going to go. Well, that yeah, that is interesting because now I'm thinking the <laughs> other way. Yeah. like Because now I'm thinking the other way of not knowing because like if it's right. I guess it, the difference, though, is the fact that we're talking about everybody are we talking about my judgment day or like judgment day, oh, no, the, the day of the day. Lord? Then, yeah, no, I'm I'm leaning more towards the the I don't know answer. Like, that's what you prefer, because if it's right now, that's what I would prefer, because if it's right now, I think that puts a lot of weight on the whole. Well, not everybody's ready now to be <laughs> clear. I don't think God's actually letting us choose. Right. But, oh, yeah. But if he sure. had. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I think I have to still go with I'd rather not know, but that's understanding. There's a lot of people I know and a lot of people who listen to the show even who had a lot of spiritual trauma around stuff like the Left Behind movies of this idea that you might come home and mommy and daddy are just going to be gone. And it's because you're a sinner and they're not, you know, and um, like it's like it's I'm not laughing at people who have that trauma. I guess the movie itself, the premise is silly, but the actual like what effect it had on people. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, rapture anxiety is a real thing. Yeah, and it's something that, like, if you're not evangelical and you didn't grow up in the 90s, you might have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> but for us, I mean, there were times that, like, my friend didn't go to school that day, and I was like, is he gone? Is this it? Was he the right. only good one all of all had, us? We all had that one moment when we were like, wait a second. Yeah. Where is everybody? Yeah, which... Why am I here? Which is challenging because, like, I know a lot of people that truly is what you believe. You don't want to cause trauma for people. Mm. But if that's really what you believe, you kind of have to tell people what it is that you believe about the end times. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, do we? Yeah, it's one of those where I don't know how I don't think I judge people for causing that trauma. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, that is traumatizing. I won't deny that it's traumatizing. But also, I, I think I equally dislike the idea of people hiding their beliefs from us. Sure. Yeah, it, I don't think 
rapture anxiety and the trauma that those forms of media caused in a lot of believers' lives was at all intentional, barring maybe uh, what's the one from the 70s? Um, oh, shoot. What's that movie called? Left Behind. <laughs> Not Left Behind, no. Sorry. Um, Thief in the Night. Thief in the Night. Um, it, it's before us. Yeah. Um, but this one was more so like intended to creep you out and to kind of make i wouldn't go as far as to say is that thief in the night is a scary horror movie but it's creepy and i i think it's done purposefully yeah. left behind i don't even want to go into omega code because omega code <laughs> has all kinds of yeah there's yeah, not a secret code in the bible stop trying to do that yes. um but i don't think left behind was intending to try and cause this like trauma but also like this was inevitable like thanos yeah of like if you're going to depict this kind of a of a theology where at any given moment everyone's just going to everyone who believes is just going to disappear and the result of all of that is going to be mass chaos and destruction because people driving cars planes doing other things yeah. are just not going to be there to do it anymore and now there's all this mass histor hysteria and death on top of it like yeah that's going to do something to a person yeah um and if that is you you know i i kind of hold my end times theology very loosely mm -hmm. because it's just it's yeah difficult and there are so many so many different views when it comes to the end times and honestly, if once you loosen your grip enough to not just say pre-tribulation rapture theology, once you can loosen your grip enough and give everybody a chance to just hear them out, you realize that like, oh, there's so many different versions because they all have yeah. very biblical support to each one of them, you know? So that is to say, if you believe in rapture theology, like... That's to you. Yeah. I don't think you're trying to cause trauma, no. although there probably are some people out there who are using it like a hellfire and brimstone style sermon. But like, yeah, yeah, that's end time theology, man. It gets complicated. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's it's weird. It's um, I don't agree with that theology specifically. I'm kind of a soft universalist and I'm really iffy on that. I just kind of, you know, I believe God can bring all things to himself and wants to bring all things to himself. So it's hard for me to believe that he, he won't, especially when just as all have sinned, just as all will be saved. Man, that sure sounds okay. pretty similar in the same sentence there, Paul. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, you know, I'm not sure on any of this. What, what I do know is that I have that God is love himself and that he's not going to create a universe where you don't have hope. So if whatever you believe is taking hope from you, I do not believe it is of God. That is not to say you can't believe in the rapture and all of that other stuff. But I think if you're believing that and think that you have no hope and one day everyone will be gone and you're just going to be left behind. Well, God's a God of hope. So I don't think it's going to go down exactly that way. I, I believe he's holding out for everyone who will believe or so that they have the chance to decide to believe all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to believe about your end time theology. I'm just going to tell you that God is a God of hope. Yeah, but I will also add to that. I don't know if correlation probably is the right word to use here, at least in my own life. Mm -hmm. And if this is you, you know, drop in the comments and let us know. But I have had those times where, like we said, where it's like, oh, where is everybody? Somehow did I get left behind? Well, I've been a yeah. Christian, you know, since I was a small child. So the fact that I'm thinking that doesn't make sense but i also was that christian who at various points in my life questioned my th salvation mm -hmm. and reprayed that prayer you know what prayer i'm talking about the yeah. prayer that we all are supposed to pray and that's oftentimes where that uh those kind of thoughts go to is like well maybe i didn't pray that prayer correctly you know and i wonder i don't know if there's any actual studies out there on this i wonder if how many believers are like that where it was like you repeatedly prayed for your salvation because you were scared you prayed it wrong yeah and also constantly freaking out that somehow you missed the rapture because everybody just happened to walk out of the room at the same time. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think that's real. I think that 
God's a God of mercy if you sin every now and then. Or, oh man, have I prayed the prayer of forgiveness since the last time I watched porn? That's not how God works. <laughs> he loves you. He's sure. working with you. He knows you're going to make mistakes. He's not going to be like, I'm doing the rapture right here. Oh, man, it sucks that you just told your lie right before then didn't get that prayer in real quick. <laughs> no, you know, like that's God's right. not going to do that. Um, also, this might be a conversation for another day, but I wonder if there's like a like almost culture wide imposter syndrome amongst like evangelical Christians where we kind of don't feel like we belong in God's grace. Like, am I really safe? Can I really be a Christian? Yes. I'm terrible. Yes, that is true. I'm going to go with yes for a hundred Alex or whoever hosts <laughs> the show now. Like, yeah, no, I think yeah. that is a, without going too far down that trail. Yeah. I think a lot of evangelicals probably ha- struggle with some form of imposter syndrome mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, this, you know, talking about the the, uh, you know, the trauma that and this form of end time theology causes. I mean, that kind of goes to like the extreme forms of Calvinism yeah. on, you know, total depravity and all that type of stuff of like really beating yourself down where I don't know. I think there's a healthier way to think of ourselves at times. Oh, yeah. And that's coming from a guy who is a Calvinist, <laughs> who is on the Calvinist spectrum. Nowhere in f- nowhere to the extreme. <laughs> And an existentialist. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. And a whole bunch of things that don't add up. But And that's why we love you. That and the beard. Um, going full that's... circle here. The, but the, um, yeah. What's funny is, I don't want to get into it now, but I, I think this conversation of would you want to know or not goes to all mm-hmm. kinds of trauma. Like, my, for some reason, the first one I jumped to was Revelation. But I mean, even thinking like in my own life with my car accident where I like died basically it's like would it have been better if i knew it was going to happen like if i knew hey tomorrow you're going to be an accident and you're not going to be able to do anything for a year you're going to be unconscious basically i mean i think in Mm -hmm. some ways yeah i would have prepared better i would have done everything else but man i the fear the fear of knowing what's going to happen like i truly i would have had no idea that i was capable of going through everything i went through like i just don't think i could have handled that much anxiety or fear or uh, would you rather know the exact hour a loved one's going to pass away Oh, well, man. Yeah. I mean, we just got through this period of losing my grandfather and it was this, you know, when people get into hospice and I guess I'll pause right here. If this yeah. is too much for somebody, use that skip button right now. When somebody gets into a hospice situation, all bets and science are off. Yeah. Like it's just going to happen. Yeah. And everyone, it's just an estimate. Everything is an estimate. So they said a week ended up being eight days. But all along the way, it was kind of like probably by the end of the week, but probably also means it could be in five minutes, you know? And it is just kind of this like dread. It is a dread of when is the call going to finally come, you know? And to know, hey, it's going to come Sunday morning while you're feeding your son breakfast. Mm. Like, I don't know. I think if I would have known, I probably at least would have said, hey, Claire, can you feed him breakfast so I can like stand here and hold my phone and wait for the call? Um, But I think it's also one of these things where this can't be a universally taken thing. I think it has to be a case-by-case, person-by-person, hypothetical scenario. Because... There may be someone out there. It's like, no, I don't want to know. I want to be able to spend as much time as possible with this person rather than just knowing, oh, it's going to be over on Sunday morning. You know, I'm going to wrap this around and try and make this somewhat practical (laughs) after doing all these hypotheticals. But um, I actually had with my own. I had two grandfathers passed um, in the last like seven ish years. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly when everything happened. I know. I think the first time we did a How I Met Your Mother episode was when uh, your grand, one of your grandfathers papped, passed oh, away. Wow, that's what timing, um, man. Because you were watching yeah. it. No, that okay. So yeah, that that must have been the most recent one. Um, what's weird is the one seemingly came out of nowhere. The mm. other one, he was in hospice for a week, and the thing with that was, I stayed there almost all night the night before he passed. But at that point, they're not really conscious. They're not fully there, you know? Again, this is too much for everybody. I hope you're still skipping. Um, The other one who seemingly came out of nowhere, it was weird. The night before, I woke up in the middle of the night and just prayed. And I just, I knew I was getting bad news the next day. And 
I was weirdly enough mm. meeting with all the pastor from the church that I was volunteering at at the time. And they got the call with the news to tell me. And it was just, mm -hmm. it, it was odd how all that happened. And even the last time I spoke to him, he gave a really heartfelt thing of like how he felt about me and where he wanted to see my life go and all this stuff. And it's kind of like that one was out of nowhere, but what was it? You know, like it was like question mark. Sure. Out of sure. Like, it kind of seemed like he might have had a hint somehow. Some form of a premonition. Yeah. yeah. That happens sometimes. Yeah. And I think really in the end, what it comes down to is whether you know or don't know, you, you don't know. Like, I, like I, I know that sounds dumb. But even if you're given a clock of exactly when someone's going to pass away, you don't truly know when it's too late until after it's too late. Like, even if it's like, oh, next week it's going to happen. Well, at that point, there's a lot of time you already lost, you know, and that's just not like with people, like with my True. accident. At that point, you know, I, I did have some brain damage. You know, I used my intellect for what I was going to use it for. And, you know, what I did with my talent, with my time was what I did with my talent and my time. And I think having that timer might have mm -hmm. made me more anxious or whatever else, but I don't think it would have changed anything. I think maybe the important thing is always live as if you never know what's going to happen because you never know what's going to happen. And even if you did know, you don't know what it's going to be like or how it's going to go down or any of those kind of things. And since you don't know all of those things, I think it's always better to just what's the one verse? Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Like, I think that's just in general, like mm -hmm. live as if the day is everything. And hope you're not in an infinite loop situation where you have to somehow figure out how to stop whatever the thing is that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. That's a joke to try and pick things up a bit. <laughs> yeah, we did go very much down the trauma hole here, but I, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, don't make that joke if you don't want it to be the last joke. Don't be angry if you want sure. it to be the last, you know, that could be your last conversation with the person. Maybe not because they left or lost or anything else, but maybe it's just literally just that happens to be the last time you'll talk for any other number of reasons. You know, they might up and be sent from the FBI on a secret mission the next day. Who knows? <laughs> There's a Christmas episode of How I Met Your Mother where at the very end, Barney does kind of this like infomercial kind of ending where he goes, <laughs> hey, kids, we've had a lot of laughs here today. Yeah. And it's important that we remember to take care of people in need this holiday season so bang somebody in need <laughs> i'm not going to tell you to do that but maybe this is yeah. you know we're all, it's holiday season we're all feeling very sentimental by this point in the episode so why don't you just you've got your phone right there as you're listening to this episode probably yeah. i don't know people who actually <laughs> use laptops to listen to podcasts yeah, but either. you have your phone right there probably and go ahead and just text somebody that you're thankful for them, that you love them, whatever you need to say. Say something to someone right now. Yeah. I think that's a good place to add this. Yeah. And if you know that you have some talent or some passion or anything like that, don't put it off. Not because we think you're going to die tomorrow or the rapture might happen, but just don't put it off because there's just living in the moment, I think, is just sound advice. Like, I don't think it has to be because of trauma or because of a rapture or because you might mm -hmm. be slapped the next day or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just wise to yeah. live in the moment. Live in the moment. And if you're like, that doesn't sound biblical, Ecclesiastes, <laughs> that's the point. Like, the point is enjoy your life and enjoy God. So, yes, you can, contrary to what certain Christian hedonists will tell you. Sorry, did I say that? Um, <laughs> contrary to what certain we can't call John will Piper tell out you, on the episode. <laughs> he's one of the 11,000 people <laughs> listening. Um, that would be the ultimate <laughs> that swerve. That would be so fun. Um, Oh man, I have to catch up on all of this content I've been <laughs> neglecting for throughout my entire life. Oh, Contrary man. to what certain theologians will tell you, it is okay to enjoy your life, the simple mm -hmm. pleasures of life, and to, as Josh is saying as well, to use your time, to use your talents, to serve others, and to enjoy yeah. what you can. Be thankful for what you have, for who you have, in the moment that you're in right now. Thanksgiving. Kill the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> well, with that, let's go ahead, jump to our wrap up. I feel like it's a little sudden, but it always was going to be. Once you start talking about trauma, there isn't a good transition. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> But if you will, you can subscribe to our show on Captivate or Patreon or on the Anazal Ministries podcast, the AMP Network on Apple Podcasts for one final question. We're going to do it after the episode. 
um, you know, also come hang out with us on Discord. We'll talk more about drama if you want. <laughs> the conversation never has to end. Um, and for recommendations. It never does in my household. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Recommendations. Um, Alyssa Wong. I heard her at NC Comic Con. Started getting into her short stories, different stuff like that. We're going to be talking about some short stories soon. But I want to recommend her Iron Ooh. Fist. Um, I picked up the trade bag Ooh. and man, it's it's pretty good. So highly recommend. I don't know if yeah, I've read that that's one. Good. I might forget it. I like Iron Fist. Alyssa one Wong. One of my favorites. Uh, uh, what my recommendation is, uh, I've been on the show a couple times since I started this, but I don't know if I've ever plugged it. So I'm going to do a shameless uh. self plug for my recommendation. I have a Instagram page called Going Collecting, Ooh. where I highlight stuff that I'm getting for my various geeky collections. If you like geek content, I'm assuming you, you should. Do then go follow the uh, go follow the page again it's going collecting mm-hmm. what's fun though is that not only is it a space to highlight just like the fun geeky things i'm finding and buying and adding to my comic book collection record collection whatever uh it's also a space for mental health conversations oh. so i post stuff about um you know, right now for the month of th- uh, month of November, I'm posting stuff that I'm thankful for, uh, because being thankful is a good way to kind of reframe yeah. uh, your mindset when it comes to you know when you're feeling depressed, anxious, whatever. Um, sometimes I also post stuff of like self care tips, things like that. So go check it out. Go and collect it. Mm, man. Good and it's plug. only on Instagram. This is not also like a podcast, a YouTube channel, a blog. Like seriously, it's just on Instagram. Also, check our Instagram out. We need more people on there to see Will's weekly polls. Please rate and review the show on Podchaser or Spotify or Apple Podcast. Um, you know, you can subscribe to our show on YouTube. Hit that like button, smash the like button, as Will would say, so you can get some extra special YouTube exclusive content like the comic book, ketchup, manga, mustard, or drinks with Tejas. And of course, we need y'all to do one very important thing. And remember, we're all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.